prisms are really simple to draw and you can do a lot with them. Really all it is is a triangle and you're going to connect planes to that triangle in order to make it feel like it's going somewhere in space. And the trick to this one is to associate it with something. So this one could be the roof of a house. It could be a, a simple basic tent or a tarp or something like that. Um, and what you want to do as you go through these is just imagine the possibilities of what you could use this for. That way it's not a distinct exercise and is really kind of boring. Um, the other thing that you're going to do technique wise is you're going to use um, line weight. You're going to be sure to intersect all the lines, make sure the shape that you're drawing is, is closed. And then you're going to think, think about how many sides you can see as you draw this. So when you draw a standing prism, you can see three sides. When you draw a standing prism turned a certain way, you can only see two sides. If you can see more sides, it's going to look more dimensional. It's going to pull into the foreground. If you can see fewer sides, it's going to push into the background. So you might try different ways and different proportions of this so that you can see several sides. So this one looks kind of like a pie slice. Um, not quite because it's not curved or whatever, but you can only see two sides. So it's not going to pull into the foreground as much as if you shifted it into a different orientation. If you turn the pie slice around where you can see a corner, you could potentially get a three-sided view. The other thing you can do is mix this with rounding forms. So you can sketch out your, um, your prism and then you can round out edges. That of course is going to change where the exact contour is, but that's okay. And anytime you round an edge, I, I would recommend putting a little bit of tone down or a wider line to indicate where that turning edge is, especially as it turns towards the ground. Sometimes you can get away with leaving it out on top, but if you include that turning edge like I'm doing here, then it gives you more or less a corner or the end of the, the flat part. The other thing you can do with these is you can include arcs and S-curves, and you can begin to make these things have a little bit of English, I guess. You can make them curve, turn, bend, and generally be more expressive and interesting. Um, and you can think about, you know, arcing inward and arcing outward. You know, this could be the foundation for doing a Quonset hut sort of drawing or any number of other sort of curved roof structures or something like that. Um, and depending on whether you display these inverted or whatever, that might change the sort of association that you create. And what I would recommend that you do is play with these abstractly for a while. Figure out how they, how they work technically and then think about how you can apply them to specific forms. Once you practice all these, it's not a big leap to, st to start to draw houses, tents, and objects with this, with this form. One of, the thing that, one of the things that you're seeing now is you're seeing a two-sided pizza looking form on the left and a three-sided one on the right. So the three-sided one's obviously more dimensional. You can see three sides. Um, this one's a bit tricky. So this one's the greeting card, and depending on how you put on the ground plane and the shadows will depend on how this looks. Right now there's no overlap, so this could be going away from you or coming towards you. It sort of flip-flops. Making those decisions helps a lot. The other thing you can think about is, well, the prism doesn't have to be tall. It can be short and compressed, and you can round that out, change the proportions of that. You can make it kind of blocky. You can make it rounded. Um, and when you round planes, line weight becomes incredibly important. So I recommend that you try all of these variations and anything else you can come up with. Then think about how you can combine them and apply them into other circumstances. And if you haven't tried any of the other forms, look to the others of the seven basic forms uh, before you get too far along.